we're back on the cliff. So you can't tell, but this is totally a cliff. Um, so what's happened here is we have a two head uh, mini split. It's a Daikin unit and uh, wasn't cooling that great. So I suspect that it's low on charge. So what we're doing is we're recovering the refrigerant out of the unit and we're weighing it. That way we can see uh, if it's actually low on charge or not. Uh, then we will pressurize it with nitrogen, um, take all the heads apart because most likely the leaks are on one of the joints, uh, one of the flare connections. Uh, and then we'll find the leak, repair the leak, uh, pressure test again, pull a vacuum, and then recharge it to its factory spec, which I think is like 3.86 pounds of R410A, I think. I don't remember. I got to look it up, but it's the data plates under that plastic thing. I had to use it to level my recovery machine. So anyway, when this is done, uh, we'll uh, move forward. So here we go. Okay, so it looks like we got... Uh, two pounds, 14 ounces. So we're supposed to be at 3.86. We're missing about a pound ish. So we do definitely have a leak. So we're going to go ahead and pressurize this up with nitrogen and then go from there. So here we go. Okay. So we got our pressurized with nitrogen to about 500 PSI. Now you're going to notice that it is dropping a little bit. Um, but you want to let it settle for like a good 10 minutes. Um, just to make sure. Cause otherwise you'll think there's a leak when there is no leak. Um, but yeah, you can see it just dropped a little bit. So we're going to give it 10 minutes and at that point, if it still continues to drop, then I know there's a leak. Okay. So we did lose some pressure and I found some bubbles right there. So we're going to go ahead and torque that down. So I'm going to set this camera up so we can get that and then we should be good. So this is actually a screenshot from the instruction manual, the installation manual. So it's very important that when you tighten these flare nuts, that you use a specific torque setting. So we got our torque wrench here. Uh, this is a 27, so we're gonna be using that for the suction. We need to know what size, so this is a 3 8 and then that's a quarter. Uh, so the line set for the, or I'm sorry, so the liquid line, and I'm flushing this up on the screen. So the liquid line, we need to do 14.2 to 17.2 Newton meters. Uh, and then for the suction line, we need to do 32.7 to 39.9. Okay, so we have our torque wrench here. So we're gonna set this up for our liquid line. So it needs to be at 14.2 to 18. So, or 17.2, I'm sorry. So we put the right size on there. So this right here, um, you can see here there's numbers here. So we wanna unlock it first, cause this is the lock down here. And then we line up the 10 with the 10, okay? Now we want 14, so 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, point 0.2, so we'll just kinda put it halfway there. All right, so now we're at 14.2. We go ahead and lock it, and that's it. And that's how you set up these uh, CPS uh, torque wrenches. I wanna get a digital one, but uh, they're expensive and I don't use them often enough to justify that expense, but way easier but yeah these things um, a lot of people don't really know how to use these me included <laughs> took me a long time to figure that out I used to use this totally wrong uh, but for this particular brand that's how you oh man this is loose so we're just gonna go until we get a click okay I don't know if you heard that Okay, so that means we hit our torque setting. So, go ahead and clean up these bubbles. And see. And All right, cool. So, no more bubbles. So, it looks like we'll let it hold for a while and see if it holds the pressure. If it does, then we're lucky. I won't even have to pull the head off the wall. And just an FYI, I don't know if I showed this on camera, which I don't think I did, but um, I actually loosened that first and then torqued it down. Okay, so we have our, our test of gauges and, and pressure test or pressure drop. So it's been going for 32 minutes. We started at 500.2 and we ended at 501.4. So we actually gained 1.2 PSI. 
So we definitely don't have a leak anymore. <laughs> and I was really lucky. I could not believe it was outside. Usually it's always inside, so you gotta take the whole head apart and all that. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and start our vacuum. So we're gonna get this uh, nitrogen out of the unit and get our vacuum all set. Okay, so I'm all set up for my vacuum. We got the Testo 557 here. Uh, thanks, Dad. Uh, he retired and gave me his brand new gauges, which he, I think he only used once. So it's got the built-in vacuum. It's a four port. The only reason I'm using it is because it's a mini split and I don't have, um, I don't have Schra uh, Schrader core removal tools for these. And even if I did, I would need to use some kind of adapter because it wouldn't fit, but yeah. So that's why I'm going to do it like this. Uh, I've removed all the cores in my fittings. The only cores left are here and here. Uh, and then I've used nylog on all my fittings. Whenever I'm using a bunch of fittings like this, I'm going to seal them. I've also sealed all my hoses. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Okay. I need to open up these two. Okay. And this right here is my process lens if I'm charging. This is for my vacuum line, so I'm going to open that up. There she goes and I've got the gas ballast open usually I will leave it open until it hits about 1400 microns and then uh, yeah we'll uh, probably gonna take an early lunch and then hopefully when we come back it'll be done okay so we're back from lunch and our vacuum is at 458 and it's kind of bouncing up and down but we're below the 500 required uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, charge our refrigerant Okay, so we got her all charged up. We're going to go inside and turn it on and uh, check the temperatures and hopefully everything's good. Okay, so our return is 79. Yeah, so that's a lot better. So it used to be like 68 coming out. So now we got 52. Okay, so we're all done. We're just going to go ahead and clean up and put the cover back on. And then we'll <laughs> crank down these guys. But as you can see, it's working great. But before it would put out like 68 degrees max and that was when I was on powerful mode. Uh, I had it on powerful mode now and I was getting 52. Uh, and I actually had both heads running at the same time. So uh, yeah, it was about a pound short, pound and some change. Seems to be good, to, seems to be good going now. So anyway, hopefully this helps you. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.